Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Now today I am going to be answering some of your questions that were put to avail. And today I'm joined by Stephen Rogers, Head of Marketing, and Timmy Smith, Head of Drivers. How are you doing guys? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good, Luke. You? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Good. Right, I hear, I hear you've got some questions for me. Yes. So, uh, yes. So, thank you for uh, letting us uh, ask you these questions today. So, as you said, our following have uh, posted on many different platforms, and so we've got the best ones uh, to ask you today. Uh, and the first one comes from Timmy. Spot on. The first question is from Facebook, and it's from Nihad. Nihad wants to know: Do you feel newly qualified drivers find hard to get work, especially in the northeast? So it's hard, it's hard for me to answer, um, especially in the North East, because that's, I'm obviously not from the North East, so I, I couldn't say. But from, from what I've experienced, I've always found it easy to get a job without any experience myself. I've, I've been quite lucky in the sense that every job I've had, um, was, but when I started in particular, I didn't have any experience. I got straight in. They didn't, they didn't need any experience. But there are companies out there who do require experience. So it's, it's kind of like a 50-50. You need to find something that's right. Uh, you just got to keep looking, basically. Just keep looking. It's the only bit of advice I can really give. It does help if you know somebody in the game already. Um, who you know is definitely a huge benefit. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of one of those things. you just got to keep trying. There are companies out there that will give new drivers the experience they need. You've just, uh, you've just got to find them. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, so our next question comes from Tom, uh, and he's... He's, he's posted three. He's, he obviously wants to get your, your insight on this. So I'll, I'll, I'll go with the, the first one. Uh, and he says, what is your scariest moment in the truck, in your trucking career? And he did add that you can't mention about the one that went viral. So the, the, the lady that you did. Oh, yeah. Anyway. So <laughs> some good driving, by the way. Uh, you can't mention that one. And obviously that was a scary one. Well, the thing is that the woman that walked out um, in front of me, I didn't, believe it or not, I didn't find it that scary. Because I, I could see it was going to happen. I was watching her from a distance and I was anticipating the move. So I wouldn't say that was scary anyway. But um, having thought about it, I would say the scariest moment I've had is I was pull I was fully loaded with a low loader. I had uh, construction machinery on the back of me. We we're about to go and tarmac a motorway or something on the M27, I think it was. I think it was. Anyway, it's down near Portsmouth area. And uh, we were going. I was going down a hill, and I applied the brake. And as I applied the brake, I heard this massive bang come from the driver's side front wheel. So I braked uh, even more, and <laughs> probably the wrong thing to do because it turned out it was a, a cracked brake disc. It literally exploded. So as I did that, I only had the left brake working, and it literally dragged me straight into the hard shoulder. I was in. I was actually in lane two at the time because the motorways were about to split open. So it dragged me straight into the hard shoulder. Luckily, it was quite late at night. There was no one in lane one or anything. But yeah, no, that freaked me out. It was quite scary because I didn't expect it. Uh, can I ask what, what what speed were you traveling? Top speed, 56. Yeah, 50, wow. 56 mile an hour, fully loaded. Um, I was quite lucky, actually. I didn't tip over. <laughs> so yeah, I was definitely shaken up when I did that. <laughs> that wasn't in the video. <laughs> uh, so the, the next one uh, is... Are there any notable life lessons you have learned about yourself while being a driver? So when you're alone, you're obviously out all weekend, about well, Monday to Friday. Can be, yeah. Obviously just you and, and you're in, in your cab. Is there any life lessons that you've learned from that? Um, I, I think the only thing I've really learned is that I like to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, you've, got, you've got to enjoy your, your own company. You're on the road a lot of the time, so um, yeah, you've got to be able to enjoy your own company. Um, I think I've probably learned that more than anything. Okay. Uh, right, and then the final question from Tom from Facebook was, uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the state of the trucking situation at the moment? Because obviously we've got, we had towards the end of last year, which was in obviously the, 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 new, the national news about the driver shortage uh, and, and obviously pay and conditions and that. Uh, how do you think that the state is now, now that we're into 2022? Um, I think a lot of people have had pay rises, myself included. Um, it's it's adequate, I would say, the, the pay that's going around at the moment. There are a lot of people paying quite a bit now, more than what I'm on. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's, it, I think the general perception of drivers is still quite low. I think the gen, like general public, I still think, think of us as a nuisance in the way. 
Um, so I think that could be improved. Uh, and then also as well, the conditions as well, because obviously we see a lot through, mainly through Facebook as well, about how people are saying conditions and they're posting pictures as well. We, we, we are seeing a lot of um, companies are trying to improve that, but how are you finding it obviously out on the road, Monday to Friday? How, how are you finding the, the, the conditions and, and paying for parking and, uh, and, and the general service stations? So uh, with regards to service stations, I think they're actually quite expensive. They could do with being a bit cheaper. Um, you hear all these stories of drivers paying, you know, 30 quid, 35 quid to park up for the night and they still get their load stolen, they still get their fuel stolen. It's not really secure parking, even though it is deemed as secure. Um, me personally, I always park in industrial estates where there's CCTV on buildings and uh, you're less likely to get bothered. And it's quieter as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then moving on to, to Tim's next question. Brilliant. Trish from Facebook asked, as a new driver, what well, one piece of advice would you give someone in their first few weeks and months of driving? Um, I would say if you're new into the game and, and you just started out, you definitely want to listen to people who have the experience. Uh, mm. You want to take on advice from those guys and girls, but also learn to sort of differentiate between what's fact and what isn't, but also do things the way you want to do it as well. So yeah, listen to people, take on their advice, but if it doesn't work out for you, then try it your way. Um, yeah. But you know, you just got to gain, gain experience basically. And did you ever have anyone in particular that kind of gave you one bit of advice when you started that stuck with you or? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Caught me off guard. Um, I don't know. My, I mean, my dad's a truck driver. Um, what what advice has he given me? He said, Always take it slow, I suppose. You, you never rush the job. You, you know, you're in a big big lorries, dangerous machine, you just take it steady. I think that's probably the best advice. Don't rush it. Great. Brilliant. So a little bit of a light hard one now. Um, so we've got Sam uh, who uh, posted this on Facebook was a, uh, who is your favorite truck vlogger that's out there? Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna rile up some people because I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really watch many to be honest with you. Um, I, I think it's probably the same for them with regards to me as well. We all do the same job, so we probably don't really watch each other. But I got to obviously mention the guys I get on well with the most. So that's my fellow road legends, which would be Kev T, Chucker Jenko, Chucker J, and Scott Andrews. So those guys, I, you know, I'd get on with the most. I would say, yeah. Do Do they ever give you any influence as well of uh, of your next vlog to do, or or no, is it just not, just not, not really, yeah. We just sort of do our own thing. I think we're all we're all different, I think, in our own ways. I think that's what works. Brilliant. Brilliant. So another question from Facebook. Martin wants to know, what's the rookiest mistake you've made that you haven't shared with us on YouTube? Uh, so I try to share everything regardless of what it is. Like I've sh I've hit a house before. <laughs> when I first started, I hit a house. I've I've run over a road sign. So I, I was trying to think what haven't I said, because most of it I do say. And the only thing I can think of is um, I once ran out of screen wash and uh, I had this, what, what I thought was water in my side locker. So I, I put it in and it turns out it was Add Blue. And Add Blue, when it goes through the screen wash with water, it crystallizes. So I literally couldn't see out of the windscreen. I had to flush out the system completely just to get the uh, the ad blue out. But yeah, that was probably the rookiest thing I've done. <laughs> sniff okay. test. Remember to do the sniff test. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, question from Sean, uh, also on Facebook, was um, what, what do you make of the new rules of the highway code, which obviously came out on the 29th of January? Do you think it's a positive thing? Or do you think it's just more legislation that we don't need? Um, it's difficult because I can definitely see both sides to it. Um, I do think there's going to be more accidents whilst people get their heads around it. But also I can see, you know, the vulnerable road users like cyclists and pedestrians should have right away, I think. But it's just, it's, it's the process of getting used to the new situation. Mm. Um, I had it myself um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was driving down a road in, in my truck and there was a car indicating left to turn left into the junction. He started going and I, I was keeping my momentum so I could just keep going afterwards. But all of a sudden it stopped and then I had to sort of slam on my brakes. And the reason it stopped is because now the pedestrian has right away to cross 
cross there. So it's things like that. I've nearly made a mistake. And I think a lot of people are going to make these mistakes as well. But I think it's good that, you know, road users are getting more protection, but it's they probably could have done it a different way. Yeah, I know we, we, we saw on, on, on our platforms there was a lot of uh, discussion from the, uh, the the truck drivers out there about it. And uh, yeah, let's just see how it, how it, how it moves forward. So uh, moving on to Timmy and an, another lighthearted question. Yeah, here you go, Luke. This will make you laugh. If you need to take a number two in the back of your truck, hmm. like you really need one and you're not in the service, what do you do? That's from David. <laughs> so as I said earlier, I, I hardly ever park in services. So this is something I actually need to deal with quite regular. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you... You hold it in, basically. If you've got to go, then obviously you've got to go. I've never been caught short, let's say. Um, you always plan ahead. So if I know I'm going to be on a night out and I need to go, then I'll stop before I do the night out and obviously do my business then. But, um, yeah, I mean, if, I suppose if you've got to go, you've got to go. But luckily I've not been in that position. <laughs> let's hope you're down in the future then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, a question from our very own Jacob. Uh, from Avail, he says, in the future, can you see your children uh, being a HCB driver? Because obviously your father was yeah. one, so you've, you've taken that up as well. Uh, can you see them being a HCB driver or would you try and persuade them to do something else? So um, not only was my dad a truck driver, my granddad was one as well. So it is well and truly in the family, but I was never intended to be a truck driver. I had no intention to be one. And my dad didn't think I would ever be one either, but I turned out this way <laughs> um i've got two girls um i don't think they will be truck drivers but you know never say never never say never um one of them wants to be a teacher and the other one wants to be what does she want to be she wants to be an actress she's doing drama school and all that at the moment so but yeah none of them show any interest of in being a truck driver but you never know you never know you never know if the pay goes up as well but that's know. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> next question is from steve jesse james from linkedin here's one for an from an old school driver's point of view, describe and explain under what circumstances a driver would use a piece of equipment known as Sylvester. Sylvester? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Sylvester. The the only thing I could think of, um, and I think, I, th I might be wrong, but um, when I was doing the low loader work, like for example earlier when I had that accident, not accident, but I went onto the arch holder, you used to chain up all the machinery, um, and I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe the Sylvester is um, the type of, I don't know how you would describe it, it's like a handle that you pour down to tighten it up, but it was it's quite it's quite dangerous. If you mess up, it can actually like knock your teeth out or something, but you normally got to get a long pole, put the pole in, and then use your body weight to like press down to do it up. Um, that's what we used to use quite a lot when I was doing the low loader work. I might be wrong, but that's what I think it is, but I might be wrong. Yeah. He did actually, uh, I'm just checking now on LinkedIn, he did actually uh, put the answer. Oh, did he? So, am I right or am I wrong? Oh, uh, well, you'll have to go onto our LinkedIn page to find <laughs> out the answer. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he has posted it on there, so you can find it. You can find it there. Quite a detailed explanation as well. So there we go. Um, so moving on to uh, Mark, who also posted this on LinkedIn, is... Are you finding companies trying to ensure that there is a better work balance whilst ensuring the drivers uh, has a livable wage? So obviously, there's a lot of issues obviously around mental health lately as well. Obviously, I know you enjoy your own company, but sometimes people don't like don't really like to be that that uh, far away from home. So you're finding that you, your company, so obviously Harry and Sons, mm -hmm. do they help their employees obviously to to, to deal with that that uh, life balance? Um, and, when you're away from home yeah yeah definitely uh my employer i'm quite lucky in the sense that my my boss used to actually babysit me when i was a kid so i've known him for oh, i've wow. known him for years he's we're like family pretty much um so he knows the importance of me getting home and seeing my family i made that quite abundantly clear before i even started working for him so we do have like a sort of deal a deal in place where he will get me home as much as he can but uh, on the odd occasion I have done like for example the whole week out it, it sort of swings and roundabouts so he does try his best to get me home and I think other employers do as well it's just finding a bit like the very first question you've got to find that right employer that will do that for you um, I mean there's companies out there like supermarket work where you'll be on like a shift pattern 
So you would probably do the same sort of shift every day and go home every day as well. So there are driving jobs out there where you can be home every day if you want to be. You can find them. Definitely. And we've seen, obviously, that the roles that we're getting through uh, uh, through our platform as well is lots of differences. And, and, and obviously, Tim, Tim will, will, will back me up on that, is that we do obviously work with, obviously, um, the drivers out there and try and find the best roles for them. And, and we can definitely see that, that if you want to be home on a night, then we can, de- we can definitely do it. And most of the other companies do as well. So moving on to Timmy, we're nearly towards the end now. Spot on. We have a question from Twitter now. Jason wants to know, why do you work with Avail? Why do I work with Avail? And be kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Avail first reached out to me, I think it was, it was March 2019. So it's literally three years ago now, pretty much, coming up. And I just, I loved the concept. I loved how like easy and modern it was. And it sort of cut out what I would say the middleman. Um, it's all done on your phone. And I, as someone who loves technology myself, it was just a big sort of plus thing for me. So I sort of, you know, worked with them for that reason, really. I just like the concept. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, and then the final question, which is obviously from me, which comes from Sean. How can we improve at moving forward being a HGV driver? What needs to be done? Uh, to so being, I wouldn't say anything necessarily needs to be done to improve being a driver. It's it's things alongside that need to be improved. Like like for example, the services. I do think services should either be cheaper or up the security for sure. Um, I think a lot of people go on about how it's very long hours, and don't get me wrong, it is long hours. You can do fifteen hour days um, quite often, or you know you can do thirteen hour days if you've done too many 15s I won't I won't bore you with all of that but um it, it is long hours but it's not as long as it used to be like when my granddad was driving I remember telling him once I'd, I'd driven like three 15 hour shifts or whatever and he was like oh what do you do what do you do for the rest of the week like <laughs> he's like yeah so um I think cheaper parking more security um I, I think the hours are okay but some people do think they're quite long but I think they're all right Brilliant. Well, that's yeah. that. That was our final question uh, there. So, I'd just like to say thank you for taking the time. Out yeah, yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, and uh, answering our questions that's come from our following from our different social media. And, uh, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Luke. All right. Cheers, cheers. Timmy. Cheers, Stephen. See you later. See ya.